Hey, welcome back and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about programming technologies and tools. Later on in this lesson, we're actually going to install some code editors, plus you're going to get your feet wet with running some basic programs. So uh, first, let's talk real quick about how computer code actually works. You might have seen or heard that computer code is made up of ones and zeros, but how does it actually work? What does it actually all do? Well, I'm going to tell you. Using sequences of ones and zeros, we can represent, for instance, a character on your keyboard. Or we can use a sequence of ones and zeros to represent some arithmetic function, such as multiplication, division, addition. I know, boring, right? Well, inside your computer, you have a motherboard, and you have a CPU, central processing unit, and you have memory that helps that CPU out. Now, when you type the letter A in on your keyboard, which is represented by the numbers 1010, for instance, the sequence that represents that letter A is stored in a memory block. And then when the CPU is ready to process it, it is enabled and it sends it to your monitor screen. Pretty simple, right? Well, your CPU is like a really intelligent, super fast calculator that can process all of these different sequences of ones and zeros at the speed of light. Each one and zero in a sequence represents one bit. These bits are little containers inside of your memory. So when we say that the letter A, which is represented by 1010, is four bits, that is the size of the letter A. Now, with modern computers today, RAM, uh, we're dealing with stuff in gigabytes. Uh, you're gonna find out soon that it wasn't always that way. But here's the breakdown. See, everything is a multiple of eight. Um, eight bits equals one byte. So the letter A is actually half a bit. Um, so, if we keep going with that, you can see that 1,024 bytes, which is made up of 8 bits for each byte, um, equals 1 kilobyte. Then 1,024 kilobytes equals 1 megabyte, 1,024 megabytes equals 1 gigabyte, and so on and so on. And when we get to the math of this, you can see that we're going into the trillions of bits to hold information for us. This sequence of how we process bits into bytes and so on is why our memory chips or DDR, RAM, 1, 2, and 3 come in all different sizes to correlate with this different type of structure. So why am I telling you this? Because when we write a computer program, what we're doing is we're writing a program that sends instructions that get stored in the memory and processed by the CPU. These instructions we write uh, to perform some type of action or event. Whether it's printing some information to your screen, doing some math calculation, or writing some algorithm or program to give a game character the ability to jump. It's important you understand the fundamental concepts of how programming and code actually works behind the scenes in your computer. So here's a little history. Way, way, way back in the 1930s to somewhere in the 1960s, general purpose computers used punch cards to write programs. Programs literally had to be punched out on these little cards, uh, similar to the cards that we take tests on in school, to represent the ones and zero bits, types instructions for their programs. There we are then, you're sitting in front of a card punch, you type in just like you would do on a ordinary keyboard these days except this thing is electromechanical so it's going splash 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 all the time during this time they had developed many high-level programming languages like Fortran and COBOL all which use these punch cards uh, to build programs and sophisticated logic that would later be used in the computers that we have today even though in 1958 the invention of the integrated circuit was developed it wasn't until after 1971 when the first microprocessor was invented uh, that they could only process six bits with and in the 1980s microprocessors could actually start storing up to eight bits uh, moving on to 32 and 64 as we know it's dead after the late 70s they were able to hard code little operating systems inside of microchips based off of these achievements and these little operating systems were known as DOS. The form of DOS still exists today and it's known as BIOS on modern day computers. This is the 
basic machine level operating system that all computers have. So I want to give you a little live demonstration right now to show you how you can interface and start talking to the hardware inside of your machine right now. Sound cool? Alright, now we can do this with both Windows, Mac, and Linux, but this is going to be a strictly Windows uh, based demonstration. If you have a Mac or a Linux, don't worry because the terminal commands for all operating systems are essentially the same and they're very similar with just some differences in syntax. So you might want to go online and look up your terminal commands for your operating system. So for Windows users, let's go ahead and hop into this. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, um, you have to have a Windows key on your keyboard. If not, then you're going to have to do a search uh, for command prompt. Uh, by typing in command prompt in your search uh, so if you don't have that windows key but if you do hold down that windows key and press r to open up our runtime executable environment um, this lets us execute and run codes and uh, or programs um, that are executable we can type in cmd and press enter and voila our command prompt uh, is open now what is this what exactly are we looking at well this is a non-graphical interface basically the transmission device uh, between us and our circuitry and our operating system. This is a direct communication device between our memory and our CPU. Um, and it's an interface that emulates uh, the MS-DOS that we talked about previously. So what are we looking at here? This is our file structure and it's important moving forward as a programmer and a game designer uh, that you understand your different file tiers. This is our hard drive, this is the users folder, and this is my user account. You need to know how to navigate back and forth and I will make a more elaborate video at another time. But let's go ahead and get into this. Real quick. Um, to go back and forth between folders, you wanna use the current directory command or CD. You put a space and you put one dot, that tells us that we wanna be in the folder that we're in, which is the current directory that we are in. And if we put another dot after that, that tells us we want to be in the folder that that one is in. Now we couldn't go all the way to C because you'd have to actually put a forward slash there. Or I'm sorry, backslash there and then dot dot to go all the way back there. Um, but let's go ahead and just press these two dots and see what happens. See, it brings us right over to this users folder. Pretty cool, huh? So how do we get back? Well, fortunately, you got to type in that folder name or you can copy that folder name from uh, the folder itself by going up to the folder um, link directory and copying the path but we could go ahead and type it in for now so I'm gonna uh, type in front side and press enter and boom we're back here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the desktop we're gonna create a folder and then I'm gonna show you how to run a program real quick so let's go ahead and do that so let's go to uh, CD desktop press enter now that we're in the desktop, we're going to create a folder. And we do that by using make directory, which is MKDIR. We're going to do a new folder and we're going to call it Unity. This is our new directory. Boom. We just created a new folder. And we can check that it's there by using CD, of course, and typing in Unity uh, to open that, be in that file directory now. Now we are in the Unity folder that we just created. We can double check and we can see that we've created this folder um, on our desktop right here. Um, and there's nothing in it. Brand new directory. So let's keep moving forward. So let's go ahead and let's create a text file and put a little bit of text in it real quick. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna type in copy, uh, com to copy what I type in here in just a minute from this console on a file called notes.txt. Now note that these file extensions here, I can make this a Word document, an Excel file, PDF, whatever I want just by altering that file extension, I can create any Windows file from this command line. So just note that right now we're just creating a text file. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to press enter. And what we're going to do is I'm going to type something. So I'm going to type in hello world. Then I'm going to press enter. And then we're going to press control Z. Um, and then we are going to press enter one more time. And boom, the hello world information is in our file. How do we check that? Well, it's simple. We just type in notes txt the name of our file with the file extension and press enter and boom it'll open up right for us we can close this down and we can see that it is in our unity folder um, already made and ready to go pretty cool huh well let's run a little program 
know this ain't really elaborate or nothing and um, we'll get into more awesome you know earth shattering code later but you got to get your feet wet in the basics first because you've never really done this so let's talk to the cpu real quick how do we do that um well first of all we can um go ahead and type the word echo and let's type in um high cpu and what we're doing is we're using our transmission device here, our translating device, and we gotta think of our CPU as an alien um, that only speaks in ones and zeros. It doesn't understand English. So this Windows here sends ones and zeros to the CPU after taking in our human readable code, and then the CPU says, okay, echo back what you say. So it takes those ones and zeros, sends it back, and this translator translates it back to us in human language. So, and it'll do it exactly the way we spelled it. So we're just gonna press enter and boom. Congratulations, you just wrote your first program. Um, not really that elaborate, I know, not really earth shattering, but uh, you just talked to the CPU and had some instructions sent back. And this all happens in light speed like I talked about. We can run calculations, run different scripts, programming languages, and we'll get all into that to the next video. Um, here I'll show you something real quick. We can do a real quick calculation by typing set, space, backslash a um, and then we could say you know two times four plus 100 boom 108 we can use these calculation commands we can fire up python even though we're in our directory we're talking to the computer system so it doesn't matter what directory we're in i can go back all the way to the c drive by doing this typing dot after dot and spacing it out between forward slashes and boom I went all the way back to the user account and I can still um, talk to the computer by simply typing echo and putting in whatever it is that I want to say. And boom, it echoes it back to maybe do math commands. And this is pretty much how it works. So just keep in mind um, that uh, we're going to get into this much deeper later on. And regardless of what operating system you use, pretty much all the system for the command line stuff at Mac, Linux, Unix is pretty much the same. And you're going to need to know this stuff uh, and familiarize yourself with this, especially if you're going into programming, uh, because you're going to be installing libraries, resources, tools, code repositories, and all kinds of other cool things. So I hope you enjoyed that little brief lesson, but we still got a few things to go. All right, all right, all right. Well, in order to write real code, we're gonna need a few more tools and we're gonna have to install them to write programs. So what do we actually need to write these programs with? Well, we need what's called an integrated development environment or an IDE slash code editor. IDEs are awesome tools that are modern that we can use to edit and write our programs, games, or applications with. IDEs and code editors are smart, advanced tools that help us with code completion, automation, code snippets, code correction, uh, matching lenses, brackets, IntelliSense, and so much more. All of this stuff helps us automate the entire process of writing programs. That way we don't have to do everything ourselves. They're very, very smart, easy to use tools that help us write cleaner, faster, better code with only a few keystrokes. The two we're gonna talk about today are Visual Studios and Visual Studios Code. While Visual Studios is an IDE, Visual Studios Code is a code editor. And for this lesson, we're going to use Visual Studio Code. So you might be asking yourself, well, what's the big difference between an IDE and a code editor? Well, for starters, an IDE is specifically designed for Windows, and it's a development environment where you code, compile, and debug your programs for a specific language or an application. Whereas a code editor, we can do those same functions, but we can use it to write any type of code in any kind of programming language we want. Plus it's cross-platform, meaning we can use it on Macs, Windows, Linux, or whatever else. And it has all kinds of different extensions, plugins to help us write better code and connect with other environments for anything that we build. It's kind of like IDE is like a really nice, awesome, cool survival knife. Whereas a code editor is a super Swiss army knife survival tool. All right, so this video is getting kind of long, so I went ahead and cut it short and cut it in half. So the next video is actually going to be part two of this one, where we're going to walk through and set up our code editors and IDEs with Visual Studios and Visual Studios Code. So other than that, links are below uh, that you're going to need in the next video, and I will see you there.